In this video, we're going to discuss how to approach multi-step questions on the homework in Alex. The basic idea here is that we want to get as much information about the approach in advance. And then once we've started our question, follow the steps provided and enter input as demonstrated. We'll start by reviewing an example and making notes on formulas that we may be using, as well as hints about answers. And for this, we are taking a look at question number two on the topic for homework, which is computing and comparing confidence intervals. If we look at the help menu on the right-hand side, the example is the fourth item from the top for us. When we left click on the example, we'll get a generated example that has calculations similar to what we see. It starts at the top with the question itself, followed by an explanation and then the actual solution presented. What we'll want to do is understand exactly what's being asked for. And as we go along, we're going to make notes on it. You'll be spending a lot of time um, here. I'll skip down to the explanation. This is where we would start making notes for ourselves. The key point with confidence interval calculations is that we'll be using the formula provided here. It's the sample mean plus or minus a critical value times the standard deviation over the square root of the number of samples where we'll be given the critical value sigma n as well as the sample mean. So for us, it's just a question of uh, basic algebra here. If we want to, we have some additional opportunities to learn about the approach. For example, this light bulb symbol indicates extra explanation. And we can take a closer look at how the formulas are derived. This can be helpful in understanding the theory behind the calculations that we're doing and can help with some of the answers to the theoretical parts of the question. We see that for the sample, problem given, we're applying exactly this formula with the numbers provided to end up with a 75% confidence interval here, a 95% confidence interval here. We would also make a note here when we expand the more of what the answer might look like for us. A lot of students find it helpful to make notes on paper, but you can also use Notepad. You can make yourself notes in Excel. You can even do calculations in Excel if that works for you. After the main calculation, the explanation goes over how to generate samples for part B of this question. And then it also answers the two theoretical parts, C and D, at the bottom. It can make sense to pay attention to how that's being answered and whether there are any hints about how to think about the theory here. 
Finally, after the explanation, you'll see an answer. And that'll be how the answer will look like when put together. And it shows you there the correct answers for the sample question. Once we're done, we would then move on to answering the question that we have using that information. Here, for example, we have a sample mean of 101.7, sample size of 87, and standard deviation of 19. So we would simply use the formula provided to calculate the lower and upper bounds. We start here by using the population mean of 105 that's provided as indicated in the instructions here. That'll apply on both sides. For the 80% confidence interval on the left, we'll use the calculator and the critical value of 1.282 to apply the formula. Here, our sample mean is 101.7. Note that we have the plus or minus option on the calculator here. And we're using the formula that we may have written down before, we're going to multiply the critical value by the standard deviation divided by the square root. We have a button for that on the calculator as well of the number of data points. To get the right-hand parentheses, we can position our cursor there and then close the parentheses that way. Press equals and scroll over here, that gives us a confidence interval for the 80% of 99.1 to one decimal place, which we enter on the left and on the right, 104.3. Note in this case that the confidence interval does not include the population mean, which we would expect to happen about 20% of the time. So this is not an incorrect answer. It just so happens that this is how our data turns out. We would now continue with calculating the 95% confidence interval and completing parts B, C, and D for this question. And that is an overview of a general approach to solving multi-step questions.